like moviegoers and movie seekers, we've got the man of the hour. Let me tell you what, Red Carpet Crash and Devin Pike is the editor-in-chief editor there. They have a website here in Dallas, and it's called redcarpetcrash.com. And they do all the movies, and the uh, uh, they have contests. They have DVDs they give away. And if you want to know what's going on in the movie scene in Dallas... I want you to go to that site. But meanwhile, we have the editor-in-chief here. And he, they're also, they know um, Jimmy and the group. And uh, that, that's a plus for you, I think. Anyway. <laughs> it, it depends on the circles that you talk in. Yeah. You know? And, and they're on, he's on Pugs and Company, which is on uh, uh, 1190 uh, AM CNN uh, show. And uh, that's in the mornings. And sometimes you appear over there. And so welcome back, Devin Pike. Thank you. Always glad to be here. Yes. And it's really funny because as you're doing the intro, Catherine's over here fixing my hair because apparently I had this alfalfa <laughs> cowlick going on behind me. It was <laughs> sticking straight. <laughs> I'll let you go on like that because they'd never hear a word you said. You know, the image person. The consummate image yeah, consultant. Right. Always, you know, it, it, the, the almost bald spot back here, no one can really see that, but the hair straying straight up. That's, you know, well, I, ca- I covered all the. the I appreciate that. So, yeah. it's, it's not a comb over yet, thank God. No. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I yeah. did that on one bit. I looked at the video, and my hair was like up, and I went. That's all I could watch the whole thing. I just quit caring about it, and that's why I yeah. need an image consultant. Hi, that's Karen. right. How are well, you? I'm, I'm for hire. <laughs> yeah. I got your card. Don't worry about that. I need. Look at me. I need an image consultant. I'm, I sit around in the dark for hours upon end, watching movie after movie after movie. I get out in public because we do a lot of great special events. Like uh, last week, we did the um, watching party for AMC's new series, The Walking Dead which oh. is a series of Frank Darabont is directing and executive producing. And it's a, it's a great series, really well. It's still going on? Yeah. Uh, is it like the World Series? There <laughs> are, there, uh, this run is 12 episodes, and they've already committed to a second season of it. And it's based off of a graphic novel by Robert Kirkman. Extremely good. It, it, it had the best ratings. Now, bear in mind, AMC has Mad Men. It has uh, Breaking Bad, all these great series that you hear about. Best opening weekend they've ever had for a series on AMC. It's really well done, and I highly recommend you go check it out if you didn't catch the episode. Uh, it's available on iTunes, and then from then on out, we do the watching parties for free out at the Angelica Theater here in Dallas, where you can see it on the big screen. You can actually... When does that get, start? Uh, it's uh, Sundays at 9 p.m., okay. and it's absolutely free. Come out and just Ooh. catch it on the big screen. It's fantastic. Now, that's nice to know. Heck of a lot of fun. That'd be fun. And they're all horror movies? Well, it's not a horror movie. It's, it's basically... It's it's the zombie outbreak that we all fear is going to happen oh, because it's you know since the Rangers made the World Series everybody knows that zombie apocalypse is nigh upon us anyway, <laughs> but it, it deals from it for more okay the apocalypse is coming how do we deal with it as humanity you know do we strip away our humanity to, to deal with it what happens to our interpersonal relationships oh, okay. it's a really it's great and well so written is, series is the first series already over I mean if I go watch it Sunday will that be the first one or is it hard to catch up I don't uh, think it'll be that hard to catch up there's I mean there's only the first episode, which was a 90-minute um, pilot. Okay. So you should be able to get into it this week. But it's so. on iTunes. Okay. It, it is on is it, iTunes it, and Amazon Unboxed. Do you have a little cl- click to it at Red Carpet Crash? We sure do. Okay, so go to redcarpetcrash.com and you can... You can get up because I, I hate going into the middle of a series and missing the first. Well, you only miss ninety minutes of it, but of course that's the first ninety minutes. Yeah, it helps it, a lot. It's, it's the, <laughs> yeah, it's the whole time. Absolutely. Time. Well, three great movies to talk about this week. Um, first off, last or let's see, what was it two thousand eight? Todd Phillips comes out with a little movie called The Hangover. Really well received. Um, launched Bradley Cooper and Zach Galifianakis's career into the stratosphere, and and. Um, very funny movie. Due date is also from Todd Phillips. It also has Zach Galifianakis and all Zala, Zach Galifianakis. See, I've been rehearsing his name for two years, and I still can't say me, it right. Yeah, me and the name of her company. And I, <laughs> and honest to God, I I've loved Zach for ten years. I saw him in a movie called Snow Job about ten years ago, which was a really funny movie. He's a great stand-up comedian. He's in everything now, and it's he, he's you know he deserves all the accolades. But it's just this wonderfully long Greek name that no one can ever get right on the first pass. Anyway, um, he and Robert Downey Jr. meet in an airplane heading from Atlanta to Los Angeles. Both of them get thrown off the flight. Robert Downey Jr. has to get from Atlanta to L.A. because his girlfriend is giving birth to their child. Has to get there by the, you know, by the birth or the relationship's done. And it's a really 
good road comedy movie. His wall, Rob Downey Jr.'s wallet is also in his luggage, so he has no choice but to go with Zach, who uh, his name is Ethan in the flick, um, to Los Angeles. And here you see him in the diner, kind of getting oh, to know each other, and they already understand that this is uh, Ethan's off in the head, and you get to see a little bit of it here this in this first clip. This isn't a tra trailer. This is a clip. Absolutely. So let's go to the clip. Peter, what brought you? childlike energy about him but he's just not right in the noggin and Robert Downey just wants to get back to LA back to his girlfriend and it's a cross country venture it's basically planes trains and it's automobiles right. for the 21st that. century yeah. it's it's a fun flick i love robert downey junior i everything he's done ever since he's turned his career around he's made smart choices he does art films he does good comedies he does the action flicks you know like sherlock holmes iron, iron man, man all those but it's a little cold. It's almost like you don't really get, you, you don't love these guys by the end of the movie. You just want them to get to the get to their destination and get the movie over with. It's not. I'm not saying it's not funny because there are a lot of great funny set pieces. You see a lot of them in the trailers. There's a lot more that they're not showing you. But it's you know it's one of those films where it's got good comedy bits, but it just doesn't seem to congeal Do, at the, the end of it. Oh, okay. And, and again, I liked the movie. I, I wanted to like it a lot more. So, but but due date, I still would say you know it's it's worth at least seeing it a matinee. It's it's a fun flick to go catch, and especially if you like him. Oh yeah, yeah. or Robert Downey Jr. Because yeah. I mean, the man is turning into you know this year's model of George Clooney. Because you know George Clooney, the it guy in Hollywood. Every every guy wants to be him. Every girl wants to date him. Robert Downey Jr. is getting into that same realm. And oh, I, wow. I love seeing him grow as that as an artist, you know, keeping clean. And it was really funny because he was on Letterman a couple of nights ago. Yes, he was. And um, Letterman asked him point blank, you know, you and uh, Charlie Sheen used to hang out in the same social circles. You know, you went to high school together. Do you have anything you can say to him because you've turned that corner in your life and you started to play it smart? And he says, you know, just don't get arrested. That's probably the the, the, <laughs> the the first thing that I would tell him. But, you know, he doesn't predispose to preach to anybody or give him anything like that. But it's really funny to see him get to that level of career and stratosphere. I, I really enjoy seeing that happen. Well, what is it about? Uh, yeah, but, yeah, I guess the guy, uh, Charlie Sheen, what does he make? Two point two million? Uh, no, it's not two million in episodes. He's made it, such money on it. It's, it's, it's a massive amount of cash. And, you and know, he is in his in that sh in the show, Two and a Half Men. He is him. <laughs> well, sure. But but the, the trick is with, with Charlie Sheen, he has not hit that rock bottom moment. He has not hit that I've lost everything. He has not wound up naked in some child's bed in a house that he doesn't know, yeah. which Robert Downey Jr. had. I think you oh, actually have okay. to hit that place before you can come back. Well, he out. was naked in a hotel room. <laughs> well, that was a hotel room. There were no, there were no minors involved. There was no yeah. theft involved. You know, any of the rest of it. I, I really want. I, he's he's funny. He's got great comic timing. I want Charlie Sheen to come back, but he's got to get it together, man. Just has to. I mean, Jimmy, did you guys cover uh, the the Charlie Sheen hotel debacle on Really oh, Bad? Yeah, yeah. How could we not? That was one of the greatest <laughs> stories of all time. It really was. I mean, like the more you found out, the better the story got. Yeah, and it's just you know, it's not David Hasselhoff eating cheeseburgers in a in a bathtub, but it's close. Yeah, and you know, Hasselhoff is. He's starting to, to get down to that weird level, too. He's already been on Dancing with the Stars, so that's like the sixth level of hell. You're, you're going to wind up further down on that. And it's just, I, I don't want to see that happen to him, but it it's probably has to just to, you know, for him to rebound. So. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, we, and yeah. being celebrity, you, I figure we, you know, might yeah. go into a little bit of gossip. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. No. For your next movie, I'm going to give you the choice. Do you want to go lighthearted fair or do you want to go serious? Oh, like I kind of like you mean serious like uh, I like kind of action and and, and uh, uh, well I don't know we we have women that watch the show well, what, well of course we have women watching the show I would hope okay. so okay which one okay <laughs> I would say uh, serious Mega Mind is that like sci fi no Mega Mind is an as a CGI animated flick from DreamWorks and oh. it, it, it's 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 good family fare really fun and one of the two films that DreamWorks has put out this year that have actually wound up on my top 10 so far and it's really sad that the rest of Hollywood hasn't caught up with it. Well, let's, let's, how about that one? Well of, of course um, Will Ferrell and Brad Pitt play these two oh, Brad. <laughs> okay, voice actors yeah. in, in this okay 
um, cast-offs from an alien planet that destroyed long ago. It's, it's kind of a turn on the, the whole Superman mythos, but instead of just Superman, it's Superman and somebody else. And there have been nemesises, nemeses, nemesi? I think it's nemeses. Nemeses. Yeah, yeah. oh, thank you, Kathy. <laughs> I'm hiring you to walk around with me every day so I don't say something wrong. Um, one is the hero called uh, Metro Man. The other is Megamind. Uh, Will Ferrell plays Megamind. The problem is Metro Man decides he's going to throw his whole career away. He's going to retire. He's going to become a musician. He's going to grow his beard long and be a hippie recluse. <laughs> Think Joaquin Phoenix, but much more attractive. And no gangster rap. So Megamind has to figure out how he is going to save the city which he lives in even though he's not really a good hero. Here he kidnaps the town's leading journalist, a la T Tina Fey, and they've gone through this routine before. She, he's abducted her several times, and they know this routine, and they have a little you know, song and dance that they go through again. Let's take a look at the clip. So you see, you you get the you get the gist of it. It's it's a smart movie. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's really well animated, and one of them it, it is in 3D, but it's the good kind of 3D. It was made for 3D. It wasn't up converted. You know where they said, "Hey, we're making money off of 3D this year. We're going to make everything 3D, like Clash of the Titans, or an abomination that I saw earlier today that I can't talk about because I'm embargoed." It's called the Nutcracker. Absolutely horrible. So um, I, I didn't say it. Um, what? what? Oh, I, I, there, was, there, was a, there was a crossed wire in the microphone right, somewhere. Right. Oh, there anyway, a lot of dancing. <laughs> Mega Mind, fantastic movie. Really a whole lot of fun. It's safe for the kids, and the adults aren't going to feel like they're shackled to bring it. You know, bring it out, and it's so much fun. It was just a great, great movie. Mm -hmm. Really fun overall. Well, I, you know, and and that's what we, you know. Uh, that's what people like to see you take their kids to. Now, I think we have time to do your other one. We do have Well, time. you know, I wanted to give you the choice on that. Well, this is, this is your awards season fair. This is Naomi Watts okay. and Sean Penn in the uh, Joe Layden-directed uh, flick called Fair Game. You might remember the political Naomi scandal. Naomi Watts. Naomi Watts. Okay. I mean, and, and Sean Penn, you know, both wow, Academy Award uh, winners. And the, the, you, you know the premise of the story because back in the midst of the Iraqi war, Joe Wilson, a former diplomat, does a fact-finding mission to Iraq to find out where the weapons of mass destruction actually were. Did we find them? What evidence did we have for it? Comes back to the conclusion there were no WMDs. I told you. And <laughs> just told you over and over again. And he's going to file a report with the United Nations and writes an op-ed piece for the uh, New York Times that we went to war based on faulty intelligence. The Bush administration, Carl Rove in specific, um, goes after not only Wilson, but also his wife, Valerie Plame, who is a CIA I, That's operative. a true story. It is a true story, and you know, you know the details of it. What you don't know about the flick, or what you don't know about their story, is their relationship and what toll it took on oh, wow. the, on their marriage, and here we talk. We uh, hear Naomi Watts, who plays Valerie Plame, talking to her husband Joe Wilson, uh, played by Sean Penn, about what her mindset is going to be going forward now that she's been outed as a CIA operative. Okay. So let's take a look. The thing about this movie that you've got to remember is we know the story about Plame getting outed as a CIA operative, and the movie doesn't really give you any insight as far as that, and that's where it stumbles a little bit. Doug Lyman is a, he, he's a talented director, but I think where he actually gets the film right is the relationship between um, like between Wilson and Plame. It that's where the, it's most gripping, where you see them around the dinner table trying to figure out how they're going to get through this. And the, the pressures of not just the Beltway politics, but yeah. international politics coming down to bear directly on his head. And you, and you figure out what the spin machine in Washington is actually capable of. And it can destroy you. And it, I, I dug this movie when it was dealing with their interpersonal relationship. That's it's good, what And it's a best. good acting. Do you think it's an Academy Award? Oh, there's no question. Um, easily for Naomi Watts because you cannot take your eyes off of her on screen.